Program is real. Real events filmed as they happen. Never before have cameras been so close to the work of Britain's emergency services. Some scenes may show people in distress, but everyone involved has given their consent for those scenes to be broadcast. All firefighters run the gauntlet between death and destruction. But the dangers facing this brigade have the added dimension of terror. This is Belfast in July, the start of the marching season in a city full of fear. A time when extremists from both communities could well increase their threats of firebombing and destruction. Huge celebratory bonfires are being lit by Protestants on a thousand street corners across the province. Fires that kindle smouldering resentment among Catholics. And stuck in the middle is the Northern Ireland Fire Brigade. Uh, Roger, there's uh, been severe gunfire and explosions within the area within the last half hour. Over. They have to pick up the pieces when the marches come to town. Across the province, the atmosphere is tense. A single spark could ignite a firestorm. Many of the Protestant marches planned for the week ahead will pass through Catholic areas. White Watch has been called out to one of them, the Lower Ormo Road. I don't think we're actually going to get there, fellas, because there's a brave crowd up there. A shop front has been ram raided and petrol bombed. Shots were heard earlier, and a hostile crowd is reported to be gathering. Those gunshots weren't too far away. Billy Charteris, leading firefighter on White Watch, won't deploy his men until he knows it's safe. Now, head on, there's a mob up there left there, boys. Just be careful. Officer 022, proceeding with caution. Uh, could you ask Officer 021 to hang back, over? Okay, Officer 021, acknowledge, over. Officer 021, message received, over. Take him up that corner so we can hang a right quickly, all right? If we have to go quick, we'll be, we'll be heading right there. While the army and the RUC position themselves to move the crowd down the road, yeah. Billy and his men can only wait. Beyond the shop, the road is blocked by burnt out vehicles, so the crew reverse down to the fire to make sure they don't get trapped. There may be a heavy police presence, but the fire crew themselves are defenseless. That's why they never deploy more men than the job demands. The brigade frequently comes under attack while working. This fire is deliberate. Arson has become a regular instrument of political protest. The men of violence lurking in the shadows are the biggest threat of all. What the No, not yet. Get it the Okay. I sent the together my hand. Fire control from Alpha 021. Alpha 021 is now control point for this incident. Steel shutters on the building have stopped the fire spreading inside, so the breathing apparatus, or BA team, is put on hold. Will you go monitor channel one on their plants here? The fire here is barely out when there's another petrol bombing just a few hundred yards down the road. See it? Boy, there's something well I can see it burning there. Oh, I see it. Across the city, emergency calls like this are pouring in from the ordinary people of Belfast. They're being terrorized by a wave of fire bombings designed to inflict the maximum damage. Fires that the extremists on both sides have no wish to see put out. White Watch face an inferno. Petrol bombs have set the front of this business well ablaze. The fire now threatens a neighboring workshop. Two large water jets are immediately called up as the assistant divisional officer, Chris Kerr, decides his plan of attack. As the firefighters go about their work, they must always be wary of onlookers. Some may try to obstruct their efforts. Politically, the fire brigade is strictly neutral. It rarely calls on the IUC for support. This time, though, the police presence is just as well. It gives them a chance to get on with the job. Okay. 
The trail of flame into the yard, burning like a fuse, signals an even greater danger, the presence of fuel tanks. There's a smell of petrol and the risk of an explosion. The fire team must work fast. What, that's petrol or something, Todd, just keep spreading it. That's those drums. That's those drums are leaking. As feared, it's not long before someone objects to what they're doing. Why are you let it burn? What do you think? What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? I'm not doing anything. Hang me up, back, back off, back off. All right. I just watch yourself. I got rest, sir. I'm not moving off here because there's a problem with some of the natives. Uh, they've already had a go at Paul and I'm not leaving these boys here, you know, to their own, all right? Back at the scene of the fire, the wooden roof of the workshop is now in danger of going up. An entry team equipped with breathing apparatus and an extra hose is called in. The special helmet worn by Jackie Carson carries a camera which projects thermal images onto his visor. Inside the building, it allows him to trace the pattern of the fire through the dense smoke and pick out the hot spots. Call, full pressure to hold it, full pressure to hold it. Say again, Jackie, over. We're holding the pressure, they can't. We're holding the pressure, let's go. Rob, more pressure on the hose ring for the BA man. Can you give him another one bar? Give us a ring, give us a ring. We're going to give you a 45. The pressure on the smaller hose still isn't enough to fill the roof space, so a more powerful 45mm jet is brought in. I think we're need a fourth one to go across. One the top of the roof. You see uh, that's the first door yeah, there? Yeah. It's starting to get a hold. OK. We're getting away through here. We're getting away through. Roof's going well. Roof's going well. We're getting there. Above Jackie's head, a fourth jet moves in to tackle the higher flames. More than a thousand litres of water a minute is now being pumped onto the blaze. Uh, we've got the roof, boost the roof stuff down, Paul. We'll just turn it down hot spots there, over. Get the stuff there, across the board, and put that jet All right. here. OK. Jackie, I've been instructed from the ADO to let you know to come out now, over. I'll take the jet out, please. Go ahead. Billy's men finally have the fire under control. It's taken them an hour, but as the flames die down, anger flares in the crowd. Now it's the turn of the RUC to control the situation. The brigade stays well clear. With a volatile week ahead for Belfast, their policy of remaining neutral will be vital. The next seven days will bring almost continuous call-outs for nearly every fire station in Belfast. Bonfires are burning round the clock. To the Protestants, they're part of a proud tradition, a symbol of liberty. Fires the brigade can only put out at their peril. The best they can do is try to protect the nearby buildings. Factory premises, approximately 50 by 50. Four jets, four BAs in use over. Although based in central Belfast, this crew find themselves covering 999 calls in all parts of the city. A derelict house near another bonfire goes up in flames. Onlookers jeer the attempts to put it out, but at least the crew is allowed to get the job done. At this time of year, shops, factories, even churches and meeting halls all face similar threats.
But even in a week like this, not all the brigade's work springs from the troubles. Stevie Smith is the leading firefighter on Greenwatch. A seven-year-old boy has had a serious fall at a builder's yard in the city centre. Details aren't yet clear, but the boy is reported to be lying on a roof beyond the reach of paramedics. No one knows how the boy came to be on the roof. Stevie's only concern is to get him down quickly. Right, for sure, stay for a bit cold, will you? A friend of the injured boy helps guide them to the right spot. A man who found the boy in a daze is still with him. It seems the youngster's fallen to the ground through an asbestos roof and then somehow managed to climb back up. But he's in a bad way and clearly terrified. Stevie's first job is to try to calm him down. You all right? You all right? Stevie, you are. Stevie, you are. Stevie, you are. It's okay. I'm Stevie. What do you call you? What's your name, big lad? Your name's Stephen? I'm Stephen, too. All right, you lie still. I'm looking again. I'm going to bring you. I'll be looking at you. All right? Yeah. Hey, Stevie, just stay still. Right. The boy, also called Stevie, has a bad head wound and severe chest and arm injuries. The paramedics are finally able to get to him. The next task for the fire team is to lower young Stevie safely to the ground. I climbed up and came down the ladder and came up here. Right. First of all, I couldn't find a hole. Couldn't find I couldn't find a hole in the roof, so I kicked that hole through myself. Right. And I heard him climb down in there, so I called him. But there's two levels in there. Right. He was on the bottom level. Can you bring him up? He came up himself up to the top level. And when I kicked, when I kicked that, I could see he was wandering around in the base, you know. Know. So I just put the ladder down and waved my arm at him and got him over. Climb up that ladder. But when I get up, I just want, I didn't want to fall through again. Was he the only one in there? It's not clear whether the boy was on his own, so Big Stevie starts combing the lower levels of the building. It soon becomes apparent that when the asbestos roof gave way, young Stevie plunged some 30 feet. So where did he fall onto then at the back? It's not, nobody... It must be the early ones there. Uh, well, it's all right on here then. Pretty solid. Sorry. Stevie okay, could have been stuck in the building for hours if the man passing by hadn't raised the alarm. Good luck. Good luck, Stevie. All right. Stevie, okay. Uh, All right, Stevie, good man. All right, bring him over. I'm gonna, we'll bring him right, over. Right, hold on, boys. I don't want that on the collar. Hi. Young Stevie's abdominal pain is getting worse. It means he'll have to be lowered horizontally rather than feet first. That makes it a much trickier operation. Hands underneath, nice and easy. Okay, Stevie. Right. Up towards me, about two inches. Hey, right, Stevie. Okay. After All right, one, okay. one two, two, three. That's good lovely. Boys, That's lovely. Okay, good lad. Okay. Right, You're alright, Steve. Steve. Good man. You're okay, man. You're doing well. You're doing very well. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing good, kid. You're doing great. You're okay, we're doing soon. What do you say, Stevie? My belly's sore. Your belly's sore. You're going to the hospital now. You're all be alright. You're doing very well. You're very brave. Alright, three. Oh. Just move her sideways. On the ground, Stevie's mother can only imagine the extent of her son's injuries. She can hardly bear to watch as he's gently lowered to safety. Okay. All right. Internal bleeding is the likely cause of Stevie's stomach pains. He must be handled carefully to limit the damage already done to his insides. Okay. Okay, bring that. Excuse me. He's okay. 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 
Stevie had multiple injuries. A broken arm had to be plastered, he needed plastic surgery to repair a torn ear, and they found a blood clot on his kidney. But amazingly, he was back home after only a week in hospital. And why was Stevie up on the roof in the first place? He told his mum he'd gone up there to put back a bird's nest full of eggs, which a friend had stolen. A night shift later in the week for Greenwatch. They're just back from a job when there's another shout, one that will see them through to the early hours. It's a fire call to the Lower Ormo Road. All four appliances from Central Station are needed. Once again, Steve is in charge of 021. Just up the road. Off 021, move right up to the road. The emergency tender carrying specialist equipment turns out, followed by the aerial ladder platform known as the Bronto. This can hoist men and their gear up to 100 feet in the air. Station commander Chris Kerr is also en route. To avoid attracting the crowds reported in the area, he orders the sirens to be switched off. Stop the horns, Go easy. This your right, is you? Yeah, that's your right. Just says on, on the road, lower on the road. Go Someone over here on the left, go like boss. That's good. 2155. That's your 2155. That's your 2155. That's your 2155. That's your 2155. That's Rest there. Stay, stay in there a minute. The precise location turns out to be the north of Ireland cricket ground. It's been petrol bombed every July for the last four years. We seem to have a situation here, and the main gates are the only way in for appliances. Uh, apparently, there's smoke issues from the clubhouse. Uh, we're trying to get an entry. Over. Yeah. As Stevie climbs over, he gets the first glimpse of what they're up against. Why not put your chains on it, pull it, pull it off? Yeah. Jesus, have you got keys? Buck them over. Right, this keys to me and get as well. As the advance teams head straight for the heart of the main blaze, they know that part of the building is already past saving. Station commander Chris Kerr takes control and spells out his plan of action. OK, that's gone. Forget that. Yeah. Oh, and, then, this. and at the end here now, can you check the back for us, Stevie? Yes. There's a side door there, which may be a separate part of it. Stevie must quickly assess and report back on which entry points are available and what exactly is now threatened by the main blaze. Eddie O'Kirk, Mellon, Smith, over. Go ahead, over. All right, Roger, I'm at the back of this building here. We've got a doorway leading into the central corridor. Uh, you'll be able to branch left and right from it, over. The first breathing apparatus, or BA team, will be entering through the front. Where they go from there will depend on where the fire's at its worst. Yeah. 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 Need to get the lines under here. Yeah. 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 The Amen, you got under our Okay. Eamon and Colin, the BA team, will act as pathfinders. Pass, pass, okay. The fire inside the building hasn't yet reached the front yeah. doors, so they'll have to go in and find it. Okay. How much air they have and how long they're inside will be strictly monitored by the BA controller. Say 180, OK? Colin, you all right? Yeah. Enter through that door. Go right, come to a few stairs, you go down. Yeah. You'll find double doors. Double doors lead you into the bar area. Okay. 
don't go any further than that. Right. And stop the fire spreading under this hole there. Okay. Have you got that? You hear that? You hear right. that? Yeah, watch, under the right. To your left, because to your left you go down steps to the basement. So All we're right. under the right, going on a couple of steps yeah. down. Go in there, through yeah. the door, down to your right, just follow straight down. Yeah. So you come to the steps. All right. Yeah. Just work at that angle to do that bit main building there, okay? Roger. Right we'll sort the basement okay. in the back now. And remember, it's a jungle in there. Firefighter, mechanic, firefighter, mechanic, over. You see any loud and clear, over. Just watch yourself, Eamon. Yes. Stop the fire spreading down, you can hit it well and good. Watch the basement. Roger. Okay. Give me a Stay with the window. Okay. Stay with the window. You'll find the steps. Okay. Do the right. Do the right hand feel. Okay. Mind the other windows. Give one you. All right. Good job, lads. No more. Just by the window, you and I. The thermal image camera can pick out the BA team, but they're working in conditions from hell. Pitch darkness with temperatures approaching 400 degrees centigrade. Oh, nice flowers. Nice roses. Yes. Yeah, we're trying to get a third jet down to the, the bottom end. Another jet down to the bottom end. Uh, John, can you give us a third jet? We want to get it down to the, the bottom though. Right up, yes. Can you get that open? it's open on it. Chris Kerr is keen to get the Bronto in place to hit the fire from above. Yeah, roof seems to be made of an aluminium type material which uh, Eric Bronto was unable to penetrate over. That's, a, that's, a, that's all that shit down like. That sounds like a suspended ceiling coming down, you know, when you're hitting it there like. He's up on there. You stay there, right? The fire's now being contained in the bar area. The BA team urgently need more pressure on the jet to bring down the false ceiling so they can deal with any hidden fire pockets. But their radio's gone down, so Eamon must go back out to make his report. Increased pressure there. Increased pressure on our jet number one delivery. Number right one above number. pump, all right? All right? All right, get on. We're just hitting it here. No, you can hear the suspender scene in that going down, you know? So, see if I'm up. Fire's up above there. We're just sitting. I tell them double doors. It throws away in there like so. Is it? Just shows you that. All right, come on, sir. Chris must make sure that where his men are operating is as safe as possible. If they're still inside the bar area, it's too dangerous to use the Bronto. The sheer weight of water could send the roof crashing down on top of them. I told Lenny to get him up the front of there. Okay, all right. Yes, no problem. Let's go. Get on. That's a wooden floor. Yeah. There's one over there, so we can't go in too far. I'm going to let it clean if you want to come up. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, we you've got a team up the balcony here, we're going through the door. Okay, they're hitting the roof space inside. We do he's hitting the roof. Okay. Panic. The BA team withdraws. Finally the Bronto perched high begin damping down the flames. Fairly clean up there now, Lenny. Most of the ceiling there you sent us in is all down, right. and the weight up above it's fairly clean. It's not burning, the burning's in the far side. Right. So it looks you can go up and have a look. It's fairly clear to have a look. Okay, stand by there. Okay. Inside, with the lights back on and the smoke blown away, there's now a clear view of the doorway at the top of the stairs where Colin and Eamon fought the fire. The roof still needs soaking and cutting open by the Bronto team, but the risk of the fire spreading has gone. Had to walk through this window here. There's to see the fire here, all burnt here first. That's why the whole wall's burnt away there. Within days, the marching was over, and most people forgot the familiar fires and destruction for another year. But for the owners of this club, it was one attack too many. In August...